Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. And guess what? I'm gonna do something completely different now. I think I'm gonna switch up my YouTube channel. It's brand new to me and it's gonna be brand new to you guys as well. I don't know, I, I think I mentioned this a few times ago that I love to listen to true crime podcasts and stuff like that when I'm working on nails or making my nails tutorial. So I was like, you know what? It's been almost a year and I feel like in a lot of my videos, I'm explaining the same thing over and over and over. And I was like, you know what? It's kind of getting boring. So guess what? I'm actually gonna still do my nails tutorial, but I'm gonna do true crime over my nail tutorial. So this is a warning for all the kids out there, okay? This is for adult audience only. <laughs> it's gonna get kind of graphic. So any kids, any I mean anybody who's under like 18 or a little younger or whatever that you guys been following me, make sure you guys watch the video on mute. You, you still get the whole video, you just won't hear me talking and if you get your parents permission, maybe you can listen to it. But just a fair warning guys, it's gonna be kind of graphic and something different. Before I go, I still have to announce the winner to our last giveaway. And let me see, I was supposed to remember the name, but don't worry, I got it down right here. And the winner is Slay by Ty. Slay by Ty. Congratulations to you. And for the one that did not win, guess what? We're gonna do another giveaway. This time to enter the giveaway, make sure you guys leave a recommendation of the next story I should do down in the comment below. Okay, so recommend me another true crime story I should do. And make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to ring the bell. And now let's get into the story. For today's story, we're gonna be talking about the toy box killer. So just a fair warning guys, it's pretty graphic. And um, check it out. David Parker Ray, born on November 6, 1939 in New Mexico. So, which make him a Scorpio. I know this because my husband is also a Scorpio. So, growing up, David's dad was a alcoholic. So, he was actually very, very abusive towards David and his mom as well. So, by the time he was only 10 years old, his parents actually got divorced. And after the divorce, David and his three siblings moved to live with his grandpa. Now, his grandpa was very, very strict. So, anytime you do not listen to any of his rules around the house, you'll be subject to very, very violent abuse as well. So, his dad did went and visit him and his siblings periodically. Um when he was living with his grandpa. And when he did, he brought him a bunch of very like hardcore pornographic magazines, mostly um, BDSM. So um, not only he was getting, you know, abuse at home, in school, David was very, very shy and very awkward, especially around girls. So he was getting bullied a, a lot for that as well. And um, by the time he was only 14 years old, so maybe high school, yeah, high school, he actually got involved with drugs and alcohol at a very young age, right? Drug and alcohol. And this is when he developed a very dark fascination with BDSM and all the um, hardcore gnarly stuff. So David actually had a whole collection of all the magazine his dad has given him over the years. And he actually has some of his own dark drawn as well in his collection. And um, his sister, actually his sister Peggy found out about this collection. But she never really said anything about it to anybody until later on during his trial. I mean, having a collection of pornographic magazine, I don't think that should be like too alarming but this did happen during like the 50s so um maybe it was kind of alarming during that time but i don't know why she didn't say anything to anybody pass forward to david's adult life so um now david joined the army and during this time he actually worked as a mechanic in the army he was a great at his job and everybody actually loved him but later on david did get an honorable discharge from the army so now, 
he left the service and he actually continued his job outside as a mechanic. And the people that actually knew him said that he was super funny and super friendly, which didn't make any sense, right? Because now we're about to get into details of like what he did. It was he was just crazy monster. So now David is married to his first wife and during his marriage he confined in her that he actually kidnapped a girl tie her to a tree and torture her and his wife thought that you know this can't be true like he can't just be telling me this stuff like this so she thought that he was suffering from like mental illness so she just kind of shrugged it off but during the marriage his behavior got like increase in disturbing like it did not get into detail i could not find the details of his disturbing behavior but it has to be really really bad for her to actually divorce him after this divorce david actually went on and get married um three more times so he got married three more times they all ended up in divorce so david actually got divorced four times and he actually had two daughters out of all his marriages and um i could only find so much information on one of them because maybe the other one has want nothing to do with her dad um one of the daughter name is glenda jean ray so that's one of his daughter right one of the two daughters so now let's pass forward to david's in his 50s he lived in a town and actually, he lived in the city of Elephant Butte in a town called Truth or Consequences, which I find it very, very ironic. Truth or Consequences, right? So Truth or Consequences, it's like a retirement place. And it has this big reservoir right in the middle of the town. So a reservoir is kind of like a man-made lake. And with this lake, it attract a lot of um, retired people to move here. Um, not only it attract a lot of retired people, it also attract a lot of drifters, being like sex workers and drug addicts. What it would do is actually set up camps and live around the lake. But you know what? This city also has the highest crime rate during its time, like in 1999. Yeah, the crime rate was pretty high because we do have a large number of drug addicts, sex worker attract to this place, right? So now let's back, get back to David. And David, while he's living here, he actually saved all his money and he got himself a girlfriend. Her name is Cindy. So life was going good for him, right? And he was working at the Elephant Butte State Park. This is actually where he met his girlfriend, Cindy. She was actually doing community service there. And uh, this is where, you know, they fell in love. So after they, date, they, after they started dating, they actually moved in together in like a mobile home, a double wide mobile home. And during this time, David felt like, you know, it's finally time that he live out his long life dream now that he is financially stable he has a crazy ass girlfriend who support his dream so um this is when things get very very dark okay so brace yourself for all this um graphic details so warning if it gets too dark just mute me so now his girlfriend would actually help him build this trailer, what would be called his toy box. They spent about $100,000 on this trailer. That's crazy amount of money, especially during that time as well. So in this trailer, they soundproofed the whole thing. So nobody could hear you screaming at all, no matter how much you cry, right? It's scary. And in this trailer, he actually had chains whip saw pulley straps clamps a leg spreader i don't even want to think about that one and um he actually had a whole gynecologist table in this trailer as well and this trailer is actually um he had it in the backyard of his house we remember that David is a mechanic, right? So he built a lot of things himself, including all these 
torture devices, which include one of, um, like, he made a dildo out of a PVC pipe. These white big pipe, okay? He made a dildo out of it, and at the base of this pipe, he actually had nails, like metal nails sticking upward. So when he insert this pipe in his victim, the nail actually dig into his victim's skin and will rip off the skin. And he actually have a huge mirror that he actually hang on the ceiling of the trailer. So um, when the when he's torturing the victim, they can actually see what he's doing to them. Very fucking sick, right? And uh, remember I said there was a leg spreader? No, I I meant to say an ankle spreader, but not like the normal ones. This one actually like would spread your um, leg apart until like your hip pop out of place and your muscle would tear. He also like had homemade electric generator um, where he would use that to torture his victim. Not only that, he actually had a wooden contraption that would bend his victim over and him, his friend, his dogs would, you know, um, stick stuff in there when these victims are bent over. Um, it was also said that David actually put gravy yeah he would put gravy in the lower area of his victim and would let dogs go at it yeah that's pretty gnarly and um david never wanted people that that are willing to participate in his sick sick fantasy he only want people that are not willing so he loved kidnapping people and torture them and torture them and rape them and um, in 1999, David actually pretended to be a cop. And this is when he approached one of the sex worker um, named Cynthia in the parking lot. And this time, so um, in the parking lot, Cynthia came, went into his car and she was about to, you know, do whatever she was paid to do. This is when David pulled out his handcuffs and said that he's an undercover cop. So he pulled out his handcuff and said she's under arrest for sex work. And this is when he drove her back into um, his house. So back at his house, he actually chained her into the living room. And, you know, this is where she would spend the next three days at. And um, now David had to go back to work. So he left Cindy in charge of watching um, Cynthia. And while watching Cynthia, her phone actually rang. And she went to pick up the phone and she's talking on the phone. And she actually walked into the next room. And this is when Cynthia saw her opportunity to escape. So she actually saw the keys right there on the table. And so she managed to wiggle her way to towards the table. And during this whole th this whole th ordeal um cindy actually heard all these noises so she hung up the phone and went back into the room and this is when she saw cynthia plan to escape and this is when she actually jumped on um cynthia and fight her and during this whole thing cynthia actually managed to escape she grabbed the keys unlocked herself and um she happened to grab an ice pick that was just randomly in the living room right there's just a random ice pick there so she grabbed the ice pick and actually stabbed cindy in the back with with the ice pick so after she stabbed cindy right cindy is on the floor so this is when cynthia just booked it she is butt naked she made the run for it. she ran outside butt naked with the dog collar on and she's just running try to wave down cars that's passing by nobody actually stopped for her which is actually so crazy. Nobody actually stopped. And, but, you know, she just kept running, kept knocking on doors. And finally, a door, uh, somebody opened up the door. Somebody actually opened up the door for her. So when they opened up the door, they actually called the cops. And the cops arrived at the house. And this is when they took Cynthia back in, uh, took Cynthia, Cynthia to the hospital. And at the hospital, while Cynthia, um, Cynthia is telling the police, Everything that happened to her. Cindy happened to walk in. Cindy is the girlfriend. I know this gets confusing. Cindy, Cynthia. Okay. Cindy is David's girlfriend. So she walked in because she's a nurse. So she worked at the hospital. She happened to walk in. So this is when Cynthia yelled to the cop like, that's her. That's who kidnapped me, right? Not kidnapped, but that's who have been kept 
who have been keeping me captive, captive, <laughs> I can't say that, okay, who been torturing me. So the cops saw Cindy walk in, so they stopped her, of course, you know, talked to her and asked her to bring them back to her house. And when they walk into the house, they noticed something suspicious. There was a bucket for you to go potty in, like, you know, to poop and pee in. There was a bucket and there was a chain. So there were like something suspicious going on here. So this is when they actually asked Cindy to bring them outside to the backyard where the trailer is at, right? So they asked Cindy to let them in. And when they walk into this trailer, they knew something crazy is in here. And there was a sign that hanging said there was a hanging sign that said Satan's den, and inside this hellhole, there was a camcorder that was pointing towards the gynecologist table, and here they also found a clipboard with all the names of the victim from between like 1993 to 1997. There was a ton of dates on the clipboards. Um, you know, with ton of names and there was a bulletin board and on this board, there was pictures like por por Polaroid pictures of his victim that was like in bondage, hog tie. Um, and on this bulletin board, there was actually a guideline, uh, maybe for himself, his friends, who knows, but the guideline said that women would do anything to get loose. They will kick, they will scream, they will cry, they will offer you money, they will get pregnant, um, but do not let them get to you. Yeah, I don't know how long he was keeping his victim for if they got pregnant. That's scary. Okay, and it also said that if she is worth taking, she is worth keeping. And she must be subject to hypnosis. So before she get released, before she could safely get released, she must be subject to hypnosis. Yeah. So there was also a recording of a woman being tied into um, the chair, the gynecologist's chair. This woman does not appear to be fully awake. So she was in and out of consciousness and um while david was recording this you can hear in the audio of him explaining to the victim of um what he was going to do to her and that he's going to stick things into every holes on her body yeah and in this recording you can hear david saying that the torture that he's about to do is not only for him but also for the church of satanism yeah it's for him and his crazy ass church and um so now police watching this video they're trying to figure out who this woman is because nobody really actually came forward so they actually sent this video to the fbi because they noticed there was a large tattoo on this woman that could actually potentially could be um identify so the fbi actually got this picture out to the public and it got to oh this picture got to the woman named kelly in colorado so kelly saw this picture of the tattoo and she said that's me so kelly actually went to the police department in elephant butte and told them hey that's my tattoo so the police actually asked her does she remember what happened and kelly has no memory of what happened to her she knew that she she'd been having nightmares and stuff like that but she just thought that the nightmares was coming from like the stress in her life and all that stuff is just you know she's just under a lot of stress so the police act, i mean the fbi actually the police actually played the video for kelly to watch so kelly actually sat there and watched the video of her being tortured so you know, after she saw the video, it actually jogged her memory. Now, Kelly remembered everything that happened that night. So, in 1996, Kelly actually got in a fight with her husband. So, when she got in a fight, she actually went to a bar in the town, right? She went to the bar she went to the bar in town to play pool. And this is where she ran into an old friend that she knew for, uh, 
she knew like a few years back and the old friend the <laughs> old friend name is Jesse Jesse aka Glenda Jean Ray if we remember from the beginning of the story Glenda Jean Ray is the daughter of who you got it David Parker Ray Jesse is actually the daughter of David Parker Ray and you know so after they sit and hanging out playing pool Kelly said she started feeling very dizzy and just tired and she remember she only had one beer but she's just getting really tired very sleepy so this is when um Jesse offered to drive her home so being you know uh Kelly knew Jesse so she kind of trusted her so she actually took the offer from Jesse for the ride home but you know of course Jesse did not drove Kelly home but instead she drove her back to her dad's house back to David house this is where Kelly was kept for two days two days of David torturing her but luckily um Kelly was kept under um sedative so she was just in and out of consciousness and after two days of torture, and David thought she was dead. So he thought she died, right? So he actually dropped her body off on the side of the road. And this is when um, somebody actually um, saw Kelly body lay, Kelly laying, laying on the side of the road. And they actually uh, picked her up and drove her home. So when she went home her to her husband and she just told him like I don't remember what happened so her husband actually thought that she just went on a like uh she was cheating on him she was on she was going on a two days drug binge and he did not believe her and because of this Kelly actually ended up in divorce her and her husband later on um got a divorce right so after the media got a hold of the story, they put it out into the public. Um, another victim came forward. Her name is Angelica. And Angelica said that um, back when it happened to her, she actually went to the police, told them what happened to her. The police did not take her story serious because she's a sex worker. So they did not, they did nothing about it. Nothing happened, nothing came about it. And it just kind of got swept under the rug. So now let's get back to Cindy, David's girlfriend. She said, while being questioned by the police, she said that she participated in most of his torture. And in exchange for a lesser sentence, she was willing to tell them everything that happened. So she was going to spill it all for a lesser sentence. Cindy said not only did David kidnap and torture the women, he was actually selling them into tra um, sex trafficking rink. And um, based on her account, she said that um, he also killed like 30 people. She also said that he was throwing the bodies in the lake, but um, eventually the body did come back up because they went back there and checked and so what he ended up doing is actually cutting their stomach open and fill it up with rocks to um you know so when he throw them in the water the bodies actually stay down and stay down in the water and the lake that he would throw all these bodies down to is actually that reservoir that we talk about in the beginning so after all this, um, Cindy was charged with conspiracy to kidnapping, accessory to kidnappings, and like a bunch of other crimes. She was charged with 36 years in prison, but after only 19 years, she was up for release in 2017. And um, we don't have any more information about her after she was released in 2017. So I hope she's somewhere living in a cave. Now let's get back to Jesse. Jesse was actually a well-known drug dealer, d drug dealer during this time in Elephant Butte, and um, she was very violent as well. But when questioned, Jesse said she did not knew about her father' uh, crimes, like you know about him capturing the women, 
torturing them or killing them. And she said that she was the one that actually called the police and tried to tip off the police that her dad was actually kidnapping girls and selling them to a slavery rink. And she did not participate in any of David's rape, torture, or anything like that. And when questioned about all this thing, of course, David denied everything. And he said that the victims were consensual and they was his willing participant. So, um, but see, the court didn't have a lot of evidence about the other victims because there was no bodies but they did have the three living victims that they were gonna they could charge David with. Remember Kelly, Angelica, and Cynthia. So they were gonna charge him for three of those victim, um, the living victims, right? But Sally, Angelica passed away in two thousand or one, um, due to an overdose, and um, so during this time, David pled. Uh, David went to a plea deal for 224 years in prison, uh, prison sentence. And in exchange for all this, he asked for a lesser sentence for his daughter, Jessie. So we don't know if she have a lot to do with it because his, her dad willing to take all this just for her um, lesser sentence. And Jessie actually was released only after two years in prison. Can you believe that? Just two years. She was two years in prison. I think she has a lot more to do than what she said. That's why her dad took the fall all on himself. But, you know, that's just my conspiracy theories. So the police actually believe that he had killed from 14 to 60 people. Uh, and uh, David actually claimed that he actually killed one person per year um, since he was 14 years old. But we don't know any truth to it because the police did not actually found any bodies. Um, but they never actually um, searched the lake e either. Like the lake where Cindy said David would uh, drop his vi uh, his victims down. Um, because the water was too murky to even search. And to drain the lake it would cost them too much money. So they never found any bodies. But they never really searched the lake either. So um there could be a ton of bodies down there. And in 2002, the toy box actually was open to public um, as like a museum in hope that, you know, uh, people would come see it and uh, will bring more victim forward. Um, but I don't think anything came, for, uh, came out of it. So David actually was, um, he has zero murder conviction. And he has, they suspected him killing like 60 people but we don't know and uh, but we do know that he did torture three and they all survived um and um david actually died on may 28th 2002 uh, of a heart attack and uh the crazy part is he died when they brought him in to questioning so when the police brought him in for more questioning he died from a heart attack and this is it how what you guys think of my new um story new thing that i'm doing i hope you guys enjoy it and i'll see you guys on the next video